Hello and welcome to my channel, so we've got the One Piece 1123 spoilers. Like and subscribe for spoilers and chapter reviews multiple times a week. Comment your opinions about this chapter below and let's get straight into it. So at the end of the last chapter we saw Emeth and Joy Boy having a conversation from what we can assume is 800 years ago. We saw Joy Boy place a type of Haki in Emeth that would activate when Joy Boy's will was recognised again. And this Haki caused all the Gorosei to be teleported away. Which I see is the same form of Haki that the Gorosei originally used to teleport into Egghead Island. So either the Gorosei, Emu, or the Holy Knights are able to use this Haki as well. However, every member of the Gorosei gets teleported back to Mary Jua, except for Satin. Emeth and Satin teleported to another location alone in order to have a one on one battle together. The type of Haki that Joy Boy put into Emeth is considered to be far above that of even Shanks, which we'll get more into later in this chapter. But this also means that in Mary Jawa that someone has Haki that also far surpasses Shanks. The cover page for this chapter is simply Yamato just eating some food with some kids. Back at Egghead, every single Marine and Vice Admiral has been knocked out from the power of Emeth's Haki, or should I say Joy Boy's Haki. Dory and Broggy refer to this as how Shoku Haki, and then they continue to say that this level of Haki could be higher than the level of Shanks. And we saw Shanks make Green Ball retreat with the power of his Haki alone, and he also wiped out Ustas Kid's entire fleet. So Shanks in the story has the strongest Haki that we've ever seen, but this implies that there are multiple characters with Haki that are stronger. And if anyone would have the best idea of the extent of Shanks power, it would be the giants at Elbath. Although we already know that Luffy can weaponize Ryo and conquer his Haki, and that he intertwines that ability into Gear 5. However, we never saw Bonnie develop Ryo or conquer his Haki, and she was almost able to completely obliterate Saturn. All this powerful Haki stuff sounds really cool, but it's definitely got to be implemented into the story well. Whenever a new power-up like this is introduced into the story, our main characters just seem to have the ability to use it within a few chapters, so let's see what happens with all of that. On the Straw Hats ship, Usopp is celebrating about the fact that he got to be brave with the giants. Luffy, on the other hand, is far too exhausted to celebrate with Usopp at this time. Sanji then looks at Vegapunk's body and a flashback ensues from two weeks ago. We see Vegapunk Chakra on a computer going through some records. He then notices that there were changes in the data laboratory that were not meant to be there. Shaka shared the information with Vegapunk and Pythagoras and they discovered that there is a Vegapunk that betrayed them. The three of them originally suspect Lilith is the traitor. However, after some more digging, they in fact find out that the traitor is York, which we of course know. Vegapunk thinking to himself realises it was a mistake to create York with the persona of greed. And perhaps the smartest man in the world shouldn't have used the seven sins for the basis of his creations. Because why would you do that when you know you need to possess all seven to create a personality? After realising that York is in fact the traitor, for some reason they decide not to do anything about it at all. They let York continue her operations with impunity, despite knowing that she's leaking information to the world government and giving them technology, they just let her keep doing it. They hear about the Lelouchia Kingdom incident one week later and they realise there's no escape. So now there's no escape despite the fact that you could have stopped this from happening the entire time that you knew York was the traitor. You let her take the Mother Flame and then give all the information to the world government so basically you just handed them the ancient weapon themselves because Vegapunk just didn't feel like doing anything for some reason. And to compound this problem even further, when the Straw Hats show up, no one feels like telling them that York is the traitor giving York the opportunity to get the upper hand on the Straw Hats multiple times. The Straw Hats on their own had to figure out that York was a traitor despite Vegapunk, Pythagoras and Shaka all knowing. It seems like the only reason that they let York operate at all is so the story could continue in the way that it did. And yes, there's a possibility that dealing with York would tip off the world government. But if they need York to steal the Mother Flame and get all that information in the first place, then what's the world government even gonna do? It doesn't make any sense for them to know that York is a traitor this whole entire time and yet be victim to her machinations. The only reason they didn't do anything about York's betrayal is to facilitate the story so the world government could get the Mother Flame and so that Vegapunk could die giving his message. I hope there's a lot of clarification that ends up coming in because this just does not make sense for the group of the smartest people in the world. 
Vegapunk, Shaka, and Pythagoras prepared the counterattack. Vegapunk modified the giant robot to hide the Tenden Mushi and they recorded a video for the broadcast. They then delete the last two weeks from their memory so York doesn't know. And that's why all of this happened, because they deleted that information from their memory to hide it from York so York could continue to operate for another two weeks. It makes absolutely no sense for them to delete their memory and wait for a counterattack when it would be far more effective to just act and operate then and there. Why not just show the world the video message you recorded on Egghead before you're invaded by all the Gorosei? They could have just destroyed York and did everything they need to do and tell the world everything they need to know without the Straw Hats being involved at all. After they delete their memories, Vegapunk finds the message he left to himself that says, have faith in yourself and die. The chapter ends with all the Straw Hats celebrating the fact that they're going to Elbaf finally. Usopp says we're finally going to the land of my dreams. Like and subscribe for the full chapter review and spoilers coming out soon. I obviously have some problems with this chapter because everything that happened in Egghead didn't need to happen at all. Vegapunk just handed the world government an ancient weapon on a silver platter. Then he's all shocked when they use it on the Lucia Kingdom. But whatever, I guess we'll just move on. Oda just keeps writing more and more gaps in his story consistently. It's getting worse and worse. But yeah, let's just move on from Egghead and hopefully Elbaf's a fun, exciting time. Goodbye.